This is five on your side at six, focused on you. One of the biggest strikes in recent history could happen tonight. United Auto Workers are going head to head with three big auto manufacturers, including General Motors. A contract deal expires in just a few hours. Thank you for watching. I'm Ann Allred. Mike Bush has the night off. Locally, thousands are employed at the GM plant in Wentzville. Our Justina Coronel takes us to St. Charles County to show us the impact of a potential picket. What do we want? Contract. Chanting for change. When do we want it? Now. Local UAW 2250 could be walking for better wages. This is the group rallying over the weekend. What I'm hearing from last night, uh, they still got a ways to go, but there's some movement. A spokesperson with General Motors said that they did put in another offer Thursday morning to avoid a disruption Thursday night. But will it be enough if not more than 4,000 workers from Wentzville's General Motors plant could strike? If so, third shift would be shutting equipment down while others set up pickets at plant gates and assembling kitchen duty to help process food for members' families. It looks like it'll start with maybe the third shift uh, that would uh, stop, but that will significantly reduce the overall capacity uh, for General Motors to produce the various uh, vehicles. George Sedition, University of Missouri St. Louis, is a professor of supply chain management. He studies the ripple effects impacts like these have. I think about it will affect some of the smaller businesses who need to have uh, those types of vehicles to be able to operate uh, their businesses. Wentzville Mayor also expects to feel the pinch. This is our number one employer. They employ 4,100 people, if not more. Um, and there are sub-suppliers that it will affect. Uh, so it's a kind of a domino effect, if you will. But he's ready to support. They are my constituents and also my uh, friends. They work, live, they play, they spend dollars in, in Wentzville, so very important. GM is very important to our community as well. The mayor and the professor hope the dilemma can be fixed with a deal. The most valuable resource that they have are the employees, are the people, and that you always have to take care of the people. So. All of the parties, I think, are a challenge at this time, and we can only hope that we resolve this uh, issue, and the sooner the better. Justina Cornell, five on your side. If there isn't a deal, the contract ends at 10.59 tonight, and the strike begins at 11. In 2019, the Missouri economy lost about $42 million a week from the GM strike alone. Signs of poverty are rising across the country, and extreme poverty is driving homelessness higher in St. Louis. Our political editor, Mark Maxwell, is live downtown with a preview of how City Hall plans to address the issue. Mark. And the Board of Aldermen returns to work tomorrow, and President Megan Green is rolling out the next chapter in her agenda to address housing issues that are plaguing people in poverty across the city of St. Louis. <laughs> Signs of that growing housing crisis show up along the riverfront, in encampments throughout the city, often under bridges, and even outside City Hall here. Green says the city could soon start to track landlords and rental properties more closely to watch for recurring issue issues that might drive people to the streets and take care to show more compassion to people pushed out of their apartments when the city itself cracks down on problem properties. But one other problem, homeless shelters often face a high bar just to open their doors. Just last night, the Planning Commission did forward um, a proposed zoning change that mm -hmm. would make it easier to open uh, homeless shelters throughout the city. We know that if we want to get folks out the street, we have to have a place for them to go, but our zoning laws have been a big impediment to getting that done. Current city regulations require significant public buy-in from neighbors before a homeless shelter can open its doors. Green says she wants to relax those restrictions to make it easier for shelters to help people in need. Live downtown, Mark Maxwell, five on your side. Investigators are looking into what caused a deadly fire in St. Charles. The fire started at a home on North Benton Avenue last night. When firefighters arrived, they found flames shooting out of the house and someone dead inside. The victim's name is not being released. Tonight, a man is in custody and charged in the death of a woman in Troy, Illinois. Officers found Norma Carriker dead inside a home on Lower Marine Road yesterday. Investigators say the suspect, Neil Howard, strangled her. According to court documents, Howard was the victim's son. She was 60 years old. A close family friend tells us she is the widow of the former Troy mayor, Charles Tom Carriker, and that she was a mother of three and a grandmother. The city of St. Charles filed a restraining order to stop Amron from drilling an extraction well at its Houston Road substation. It's just outside the Elm Point well field. EPA test results revealed earlier this year that Amron was responsible for contamination to the well field and ordered to clean it up. 
A judge approved the stop work order until both parties can appear in court. We reached out to Amron. A spokesperson says the company is working on a response. Doors are opening for people in Delwood, a St. Louis area nonprofit, wants to empower and ensure economic growth in the area. Five on your side, Travis Cummings takes us to North St. Louis County for a look at this $20 million investment. Prophecy, prayer, and then persistence. Those three P words are what this new marketplace in North County stand on. When there's communities that have um, this investment or you see things leaving communities, um, you know that eventually then the next item is about to depart. Ken and Beverly Jenkins have made it their mission to turn this once empty 88,000 square foot shopping plaza on Florissant Avenue in Dalwood into a stomping ground for success. Their nonprofit refuge and restoration washing off the stain left by what many know as the center of the Ferguson uprising back in 2014. Another P, pride. What you see among the faces in this crowd supporting the couple's vision. Being pastors and community leaders, relationship is so important to us. We've learned that without relationship, nothing happens. The Jenkins are working with people like Orvin Kimbrough, who put a new bank on the lot. Our objective is to develop alternative models, payday loan alternatives that help you think differently and then also help you gain access to credit uh, in a different kind of way. Check out these chairs, meeting tables, endless offices inside the North County Innovation Center. This is just one of the facilities that can help people grow. It's an incubator individuals and businesses can rent out for ideas and collaboration. Just the ideas that come from changing the world, it comes from being in front of a smart board or having something on a, on a TV where you're brainstorming and figuring out how can I really change something for the better. Hello, so we got some banana pudding cakes. That's all just doors down from another North County yeah, yeah, food staple, so Kathy's so Kitchen, yeah. and employ St. Louis for workforce and a drug recovery center to help with wellness. All of these resources springing up for the last and most important P, people. And this is a picture of what real equity looks like and how powerful it is. Travis Cummings, five on your side. Many of the pillars at r, &R Marketplace are now open as phase one of the project. An early childhood learning center and some others will open in the fall. A multiplex will open next year to include a church and small theater. They hope to create 2,000 jobs in the next five years.